Welcome to Upsides. We're here to talk about week five in the NFL. I'm Matt Ufford, joined as always by two white guys in sports media. Where did we find them? We finally broke in. First game on the docket. Oh, man. It is so rare for us to talk about the Cleveland Browns on this show, but uh, hey, Patriots at Browns. Tom Brady back from suspension. You see the uh, the coverage of like after the week four game and it was like, it's after midnight, Brady can get back in the building. It's like, dude, Tom Brady had chicken and steamed broccoli for dinner with like a side of echinacea and went to bed at 8.30. He's not going into the building at 12.01. He was like, probably still frolicking over Europe with uh, Giselle. No, he lives a very boring life. Also, it's the f Patriots. He's been on the sideline as a coach with a fake mustache on these first four weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't have any contact with uh, Bill Belichick. Oh, what are they going to do? Take his phone? <laughs> Good luck with that. Dunk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Let's talk about the Browns because uh, they will also be in this game. Well, sorry, they'll also be in attendance. They will also be in attendance. In this game is a little too strong. Uh, they'll be observers. Just as one would observe their own murder, it's kind of an out-of-body experience. It's kind of been a perfect season for the Browns in that they've still managed to look kind of competent. Terrell Pryor is exciting. Terrell Pryor is exciting. They get Josh Gordon back. Is that this week? Josh is Gordon, John... he's going to rehab. Wait, did I miss something? You might have missed something. He's going to rehab. I was offline the last five days. <laughs> I thought you were he, joking. Are you serious? He, yeah, he, uh, there's, oh, the, so the, the, I just found that out live on the show. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> yeah, I was way offline for the better part of a week. <laughs> How much were the Browns paid to schedule this game with the Patriots? They're getting like $500,000, and it's going to go right to the endowment for the university. <laughs> the city of Cleveland needs it. Browns trying to get in a Power 5 conference? Anyway, the line on this game is is Pats by 10. Uh, this is going to be an angry, angry Pats team, and I don't think they'll win this by any less than 17. Yeah. Another game worth watching is the Atlanta Falcons. NFC South leading Atlanta Falcons traveling to Denver to face the Broncos. Everyone's talking about that Atlanta offense and with good reason because Julio Jones, 300 yards receiving, just the fourth wide receiver in the Super Bowl era to do that. He is just a horse with opposable thumbs. That's that's what he is. Like, oh, there goes Julio Jones galloping past the secondary again. He can barely practice with a calf injury too. Horses have three legs for a reason. Oh, so I meant to say he had three good legs. Horses <laughs> actually have four legs. I just fact checked myself on that one. There is reason to suspect that perhaps this Falcons team is a fraud. That is because Atlanta's opponents are averaging 31 points per game and no one has scored fewer than 28 points against them. That's not good. Here's the counterpoint though. With an offense that good, why do you want your defense on the field? Get them out of there quick, give up a couple scores, roll Julio Jones back out there. That's true. Three-legged horse himself. <laughs> the three-legged horse. Is one his dick? It is now. <laughs> Tevin Coleman has the uh, the sickle cell trait. Says he's going to give it a go. Well, running backs have such storied and lengthy careers, and there's not too much injury risk otherwise. So if you get one game, you might get hurt. <laughs> roll the dice. I mean, how much more dangerous is it than any other game? Right. I could die skydiving or walking across the street. So why wear the seatbelt? <laughs> Tevin Coleman is a super hardcore libertarian. <laughs> The Broncos here are favored by five and a half. I'm taking Broncos. Yeah, Broncos. The Atlanta Falcons are my pick. Another late afternoon game worth watching, worth paying attention to at the corner of your eye. Uh, Buffalo at LA. The NFC West leading Rams. <laughs> and you know if they win this game, that's like a five-year extension for Jeff Fisher. Well, they've already got the extension. They're just waiting to announce exactly. it. Exactly. And if I'm not taking the Rams seriously, it's because A, they're the Rams. B, despite being 3-1, and one, they uh, have a negative point differential. Buffalo, meanwhile, is coming off a shutout of New England. Firing their offensive coordinator is all they needed to do to get their defense on track. Yeah, the Bills fired uh, Greg Roman, and the defense got way better instantly. That's, that's how it works. It's math when you think about it. What I enjoy about the Bills being competent, Rex Ryan is like up to his, his, his old-timey antics, like when the Jets were good. He was like fun Rex. And last week when he like got on the conference call with Julian Edelman and pretended to be a reporter. I like fun Rex. You know what it is? When fat people get skinny, they stop being funny, but he got rid of the lap band. And that was yes. funny again. They should put Jonah Hill as the DC now. <laughs> the line on this game is Rams by two and a half. That's a bold line because that assumes that one or both of these teams is going to score more than two and a half points. <laughs> 
I'll hate on the Rams one more week. I'll take the uh, the Bills to cover. Uh, I'll take Rams. Sunday night football, Giants at Packers. Uh, one of the three notes that I have for this game is not terrible. Not terrible. The Giants travel to the Midwest for primetime games in consecutive weeks. I feel like that's a very weird thing to schedule. Like, if you had business trips back to back to Minneapolis and Green Bay, that'd be like, oh, sorry about your job. Minneapolis is fine, especially this time of year. Ugh. That was a boring game to watch on Monday Football because that's what the Vikings do. They, they turn the opposing offense into just boredom. And Xavier Rhodes, I hope Odell Beckham is charging him rent because he now has a, a loft condo inside of Odell Beckham's head. Dad jokes. That's not dad jokes. That's, that's dad that's, that's a sports, witticism. That's sports talk radio bull. Okay. Odell Beckham, though, seriously does have, like, the emotional maturity of, of a child. Yeah, the fact that he gets pissed if corners play like corners. This is football. I'm supposed to be allowed to run free and catch the ball. <laughs> no, don't touch me. I'm in commercials. <laughs> Pageant kid. Anyway, line on this game is Green Bay by seven. Packers well rested after the bye week. Giants uh, on a short week. I'm kind of over the Giants being in primetime all the time. Eli Manning, I don't give a f that he's a Manning. I don't care that he's won two Super Bowls because he got f lucky. They're crap. No, I'm going to take the Packers. Yeah, Packers easily. And Monday Night Football, Tampa Bay travels to Carolina to face the Panthers in a battle of NFC South basement dwellers. Ah, oh, that is fun to say. Cam Newton is in concussion protocol. I saw a lot of criticism of, of Cam Newton slowing up on that two-point conversion where he got hit in the helmet. Everyone's like questioning his judgment for it. That was like a split second. He got hit in the helmet, stumbled, and still got into the end zone. Like, let's give him a little bit of credit for fighting through instant brain injury to still get the conversion. As someone who has bagged on Cam Newton throughout their 15-1 and season and not really liked him, I feel like things have swung back too far the other way and things have gotten too critical of Cam Newton. That's a team with a, with a lot of holes and he's still the MVP. Do you think they can get Josh Norman to come back though for a game to guard yeah. Mike Evans? Remember when the Panthers didn't want Josh Norman and then Julio Jones had 300 receiving yards? Like I have no idea who to believe in this game. I believe in Derek Anderson. I believe in horse balls. We're talking about every part of the horse this week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Three-leggers, four-leggers, the balls. Horse balls got his nickname, uh, of course, because he conjured up a season's worth of magic to make the Browns good for a season in 2007. Back on that Browns team, was he the balls and Braylon was the dick? Probably, yeah. Okay. Horse dick. Braylon got the nickname horse dick not for his groin, but because his hands were like horse dicks. <laughs> <laughs> There is no line on this game because uh, as we shoot, we do not know if Cam Newton will be playing. Uh, I feel like that lets us off the hook. We don't even have to pick a winner here. Sick. I think all things being equal, the Panthers are the better team and uh, they'll come back down, uh, come back up to earth. They've been in hell. They've been underground. All right, so those are our picks for the best games of week five. Uh, I think that all of our hard work and preparation really paid off with some good insight this week. As always, thanks for watching Offsides. Remember to subscribe to SB Nation, comment below, give us that thumbs up, and tell some friends. Hey, we'll see you next week, thanks. You want them to tell their friends, hey, we'll see you next week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>